The ocean is a huge, vast blue place with a lot of nothing. It's almost like space. There's just nothing there. And so any type of structure, any type of cover, uh, even a coconut or a palm frond or a cargo net becomes kind of a, a little ecosystem that harbors smaller bait fish um, where they can hide, um, where they can reproduce. And then, you know, the whole food chain starts growing from there. So bigger fish start to congregate on these, uh, these structures and so on and so forth until, you know, you get the large tuna and billfish that, that'll not necessarily stick around, but they'll definitely come check it out. What we did is um, we worked with a lot of the fad experts from the regional organizations as well as uh, the community fishers to come up with a fad network or a map of select sites around Palau that fads would be deployed and the locations were based on three different criteria. Uh, the first being uh, productivity and science has kind of uh, shown that these fads are more productive in deeper areas and areas of certain current situations and drop-offs. However, there's also the, the issue of accessibility. A lot of Palau's fishers, they don't have the larger vessels that can go quite a ways out. And so their request it was to have the fads accessible to them and be more near shore. However, there's kind of a happy medium that you need to achieve there, um, being productive and being accessible. And so uh, a lot of the sites have taken both of those into account and they're say about two to seven miles off of shore based on the areas of uh, best productivity and accessibility. And then the third um, kind of criteria that we take into account when we're uh, selecting a fad location is the um, uh, hazards. So we need to keep them away from submarine uh, fiber optic cables, shipping lanes, and other potential hazards. So the first fad that was deployed was a fad that we call K2, which is outside of Ngartmau, which was a historically a productive area and, and that's the location that we decided to deploy or attach the eco buoy to that we went and visited. So uh, we visit that fad quite often just to check on its uh, status, its location and the amount of fish that it's it's been gathering and, and it seems to be pretty productive in its lifespan so far. It's, it's, it's about three months old. When we first started visiting it there wasn't very many um, fish there. As we continued to visit it, we could see more and more bait fish start to, to habitate the, the fad and the structure that is associated with the fad. And then this last time that we went, we saw quite a, uh, quite a bit of bait fish and juvenile yellowfin and uh, skipjack in the one to five pound range, which is very encouraging. So basically the, um, the eco buoy is, has, has three main parts has a echo sounder, uh, which similar to a vessel's uh, transducer can read, you know, uh, what's underneath it using uh, sonar. The amount of biomass or the amount of fish that's underneath and what types of fish uh, using uh, differences in the fish's swim bladder to differentiate between yellowfin, skipjack and others. The second part of the uh, technology is a GPS uh, global positioning system that allows the user to uh, get a location reading for the, the eco buoy at any given time and it also automatically updates its location so uh, in rough weather or at night or when there's strong current and the fad shifts around you can always know exactly where it is and then the third piece of the technology is the the satellite connection and so it's transmitting all this data to satellite which then uh, transmits it back to the user's computer at any given time. Uh, in real world uh, scenarios, um, if I was a fisherman, um, I could go to say BMR's website and get information on how much fish um, is at this particular fad. Uh, if there's multiple eco fads, you can see which fad you want to target, where it is, uh, and what type of fish is on that fad. So it really makes um, uh, small-scale fishing uh, a little bit uh, more productive and a lot safer. The idea is that we're going to have eco buoys on every one of the fads that are deployed in Palau and so at any time you know you can see 
where the fish are, where to uh, uh, use your fuel to, to go and target these fish. And then uh, in the long run, um, we can use all that data for kind of uh, long-term uh, data analysis and see which fads are more productive, which fads are less productive, what the migration patterns are for these fish, whether they're going from fad to fad or going in and out. And, you know, it's, uh, I think it's uh, something that's very exciting and, and has uh, practical applications for, uh, for the future.